Okay. That does make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me move it back. Turn it on. <laughs> Turn it on. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, I'm not trying. Okay, that's better. Okay. Well, you know, just starting all over again, because when I started this, it was like 11 11, but I didn't have it recording. <laughs> You press the button. I didn't press the button. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> joy, joy, joy. Okay, so I said to my husband, I said, honey, let's talk. And I wanted us to talk about how we feel about Georgia. Let, let's just pick Georgia because that's where we live. We've been here for how many years now? 19? No, 18, 18 years. years. 18 years. And um, so Georgia is going to begin <clears throat> opening up tomorrow. And people are sort of, you know, like, what the hell? <laughs> Why is he opening up bowling alleys? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you what I feel about the bowling alley. People have been indoors for a long time. Bowling is a pastime. <clears throat> I used to be in a bowling league. What about you, honey? Were you ever in a bowling league? Not in a bowling league, no. You have bowled? Yeah. I remember bowling. My daughter said, you bowl like a lady. <laughs> she was making fun of me. But anyway, so bowling alleys are going to open. So that means that people will be able to be, to entertain themselves, you know, with friends, with family, okay? Um, nail salons are going to open up because you know you all got to get your nails done, going back to work, whatever. But Nail salons, uh, barbershops, hair designers, I thought that was pretty cool. Gyms, spas, massage therapists, okay, uh, and there are a couple of other things. Oh, dining restaurants, and that's Friday. Then on Monday, theaters and a couple of other things are going to open up. <clears throat> okay, I don't have the article right in front of me, so forgive me if I don't mention everything. Oh, body art, that's another thing. Okay, so I'm going to tell you why I think that he's starting in that vein. People have been on lockdown for a while. And you know, when you look good, you feel good. So I would say that the hair salons and the nail salons and the barbershops, you know, are good for making you look good so that you can feel better. Okay. It does something for your self-esteem. Uh, the bowling alleys, you know, coming together with family and friends, getting out, rolling the ball, hitting the pins, you know, joy, fun. All right. Um, the massage therapists, actually, massage therapists are essential. Okay. That means that Jeju will be open because I think they had closed for a minute because they probably had to do something you know, to make sure it was sanitized. But Jeju will be open, and it's good. Jeju is the Korean spa. Yes, and it's an awesome Korean spa. I mean, it's awesome. It's the jewel. <laughs> okay. You know, so that's why I feel that those things are opening up. And people mm -hmm. like massages. Massages get the kinks out. You know, the massages help to release the stress. You go to the gym, that helps to relieve stress. You know, keeps you in shape because a lot of people may not have the energy to do it at home, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what are your thoughts, honey? Well, you know, as you have said, these are essential services. They're support services. If you want the people to get back to work, you got to provide a support system to help build them up somewhere where they can go to when they might not be feeling the best. You know, and they're there to make you feel better. You feel better, you'll be better. <clears throat> That's for sure. <clears throat> That's for sure. You know, and then we've been reading and listening to various different um, places, people talking about the numbers <clears throat> being fudged, you know, um, people who had <clears throat> died from, let's say, pneumonia or something else, or being listed as having died from COVID. I mean, that's not fair. <laughs> Let them have their pneumonia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, they didn't die from COVID. They died from pneumonia. Or they died from heart disease. They died from something else. 
So the numbers are being fudged because as we see it, all right, there is this element of fear that prevails because of the mainstream media constantly bombarding people with bad news. I mean, we deal with the law of attraction. We deal with the power of the spoken word. You know, we deal with prosperity consciousness. And there's a certain, we know that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Okay, and that goes way beyond, what is it, the uh, United Negro College Fund? Yeah, mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah, it goes way beyond the United Negro College Fund. <clears throat> the mind is a terrible thing to waste on energy that puts you into a state of fear, which freezes you up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can't be, I mean, for real. <laughs> it's, I understand we understand. I can, I can actually say this for him and I'm going to let him say something about it. Yeah. But we understand that there are people who live in cities like New York, especially. Um, there's someone who I've known half her life. You know, she has a neighbor down the street that died, another neighbor down the street that died, another neighbor up the street that died, this one died, that one died, you know, and supposedly they all died from COVID. All right. Then I have another friend who has family that lives in New York, four of them had contracted COVID and all four of them are still alive. Okay. You know, so, but the one who, who, who has the death around her because she's like a spiritual daughter to me, I had to stop her on her forward motion in regards to saying something about a friend of hers that died from cancer. Because she said, well, she probably had COVID. And I said, don't, don't, don't. She died from cancer. Let her have her cancer. <laughs> Let her have her cancer. She didn't want COVID. Okay. You know, so the fear, the fear of scaring people to death. I mean, my God. Oh, honey, speak on it, please. Fear is a mind killer. Mm. And that's exactly what's happening. People's minds are really being laid to rest over fear. Too much fear, you know, and they're running with it. But, you know, there's a big secret. Mm. Something that is essential that people have not talked about, that doctors have not brought up, except maybe a few, in certain areas, and that is the power of your immune system. <laughs> Hear me, your immune system, if it is compromised, you're going to die from anything other than COVID. The state of your immune system is important. And so the emphasis really, if they're not doing this on a national plan, then it's up to us to do it individually in our lives. Do what we need to do to build up our immune system. Because that is the first defense against viruses, bacteria, and any little unseen enemies running around. If you have a strong immune system, the slightest you might get is a little cold, and that'll be it. And the cold is your immune system attacking the invader, getting rid of it, rendering it inert, pushing it out of your system. If you do not strengthen your immune system, then you're open to whatever is out here. And there are millions, if not billions or even trillions of different viruses out there. Mm. COVID is not the only one. Mm. So how have we existed before the onset of COVID? We existed through the power of our immune system. But today, based upon what we eat and our lifestyle, our immune system is compromised. And also, my, I would add, baby, the mindset, because, you know, 
there are people that would say, okay, well, we, you're on dialysis. Mm -hmm. You know, you had heart surgery. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're at risk because you're on dialysis. They would say that. Okay. But you go where first before you even go to the immune system? Where is it that you go to first and foremost? I go within. I go within. Mm -hmm. If you don't go within, you'll go without. There you go. You've got to hook up to your own personal power. It is here. President Trump can't give it to you. Your governors can't give it to you. Your personal power is here ordained by God. Mm -hmm. Tap into that personal power. Build up your system. Strengthen your life. Renew your mind. Don't just take in anything that they feed you. Renew your mind. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. And when he talked about don't t just take in everything that they feed you, it's like Reverend Ike had said, you know, to the point, you read the, you read the ingredients. Okay, majority, it was a time when you went to the store, you didn't read the ingredients. But because people have high blood pressure and heart disease and gluten and whatever else, they're reading the ingredients. If it's not good for them, they put it back. They don't get it. Okay? So it's like, read the ingredients of what's going on in the news. And if it's not good for you, put it back. Don't accept it. Okay, because it's not, it's not something that is good for you. Okay, not that I listened to the video yet. I read the headline and I'll listen to the video later, you know. But for Don Lemon to come out and say, who do the protesters, the freedom protest, who, do you, who the hell do you think you are? I'm an American born in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If I don't want to stay home, mm -hmm. I should not be forced to stay home. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to stay home, they can stay home. Okay, but you need to protect my constitutional rights. And I'm out here to say, not that we march and protest like that, because we do our own thing. But for those that were out there, those freedom protesters, it's like enough already. You know what I'm saying? It's like... This is not this is not happening and there's a domino effect. Okay? You know you can get into food shortages. You you've already got your paper so shortage. And food shortage, the gas prices have gone down considerably. You know, yeah, this is a time when a lot of people are going to make money because they're going to make investments where they're going to make money. Okay? And then there're going to be people that are going to be on the other side of the fence and they're going to be depressed and they're going to be standing on these two mile long, long lines to get some food. Excuse me. That doesn't make any sense to me. This is America. This is the land of opportunity. This is where you can go from the ghetto to the castle. Okay? But right now, if somebody's got, got their thumb, got their foot in your neck, you're not going to be able to rise. You know? Anyway. Honey, do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to share? Because we're getting into like 15 minutes here. Well, I think uh, we've dropped enough this morning. <laughs> got enough to chew on. You know. mm. Chew on it very carefully and let it feed you. Yes, be nourished. We love you. And we want to see you be brave and confident in yourself and strong in your soul and in your spirit. Mm-hmm. That's important. We want to see you prosperous in every way, shape, form, and fashion. Your good health, the happiness, love, success, and having more money. You know, so get with it. <laughs> <laughs> you love. All right. Mwah. Take care. Love you.